Hi, thanks for joining me today. Today's topic is defining success as a writer. So this is obviously from my point of view, not everybody will agree with uh, my definition of success, but I'll give you a little bit about my journey and how I came to uh, define or actually redefine the uh, subject of success as a writer. So when I first got published with Moody Publishers back in 2007, I had a very different view of success. It's pretty common. Um, my view was getting on a bestsellers list. That was success. Getting a certain amount of sales was a, a check in the box of success. If I didn't get in front of readers in Barnes & Noble or Lifeway in a certain placement on the shelf, then I wasn't successful. That was my definition. And if that none of those things happened, if I couldn't check those boxes, then I was doomed. And that was the message that I picked up on early on. Um, the sales on Amazon, it, you know, if they started to plummet, then might as well hang it up. Why am I even doing this? So in my mind, I wasn't a real writer until all those boxes were checked. And uh, the sales numbers were validation for not just me, um, for, for all those years, <laughs> really years spent trying to get published. And that was... Um, something that led quickly to me becoming bitter. It didn't uh, change my ability as a writer. No, but it changed my heart as a person. And I complained constantly to myself um, about my situation, about my competition. So, you know, that was a downward spiral. It, there was no coming out of that, at least not with you know, that, that mindset, uh, became critical of other writers. Like I mentioned, they were doing much better than me, by the way, based on the number of review reviews that they got on Amazon and, you know, them making both sellers lists and, and this kind of thing. And like, what's going on here? Hmm. So there was, uh, <laughs> it didn't, it didn't get any better. I mean, this was, this went on for years and I just got deeper and deeper into that bitter, bitterness mindset. And that, that was a season of, I, mean, I was still writing, but I didn't have any fulfillment in my writing because of my definition of success. And after a while, I didn't write. I just hit a wall. And it wasn't writer's block. It was dissatisfaction. It was, I, I wasn't managing my expectations correctly because I had. And... Um, unrealistic definition of success. Stopped interacting with other writers. I mean, I didn't go to writers' conferences. I didn't pitch any more books to editors. I mean, I was cutting my own self off because of my bitterness. Um, I didn't participate in online communities with other writers. It's like, why? Because I know I'm better. But yeah, <laughs> there was uh, some stinking thinking. So. I virtually disappeared, and if you know anything about writing and staying in front of readers with your writing, then, you know, if I'm not writing and putting that out there, if I'm not in a, integrating myself and putting myself into these communities, I, might, I, I don't exist. And my books, yeah, they're on Amazon, but you can build it, and they're not going to come. So marketing, I wasn't marketing because I wasn't writing. I wasn't feeling like I was part of the community. This was This was me against them. And it was all, like I said, rooted in my stinking thinking and my bad definition of success. Downward spiral, stinking attitude, bad definition of success. In his infinite grace, <laughs> God reached into my gloomy disposition about writing, about life, and taught me how to change my thinking. He taught me how to take on his definition of success for me. 
And actually, it came in the form, that, that challenge of thinking of success differently, came in the form of a blog post from an agent that I pitched my first book, to, or at least tried to, and he cut me off. It's like, no, I don't want to publish. I, I don't want to represent that kind of book. It's like, okay, great. Um, hmm. That was a slap in the face to me because I had previously experienced agents that were at least diplomatic about the way <laughs> they turned you down. But this was yes, just cut me off. And I still followed him online, but there was still kind of that you did me wrong kind of thing. And his blog post took me by surprise. I'll be honest, he's represented reader or writers in the Christian Book Sellers Association, CBA, as well as American Book Sellers Association, a a Association, ABA. And he's had bestsellers, authors of bestsellers on, you know, New York Times, Essence, um, USA, Today, USA, you name it. They've done well because of him discovering them or him representing them primarily. I mean, of course, if they're writing, it was good too. But for him to say that success was not in book sales, success was not in bestsellers lists, it was not in being invited to the White House or whatever. You know, he, I don't remember exactly you know, his words as far as the, the list to check off, but the success was in following God's call. Following God's call. And he laid a few things out in that post, basically saying, I apologize. <laughs> and that was the beginning of a lot of work that God was doing in his life. Apologies for how he harmed people and um, how he had misled people in thinking what success looked like. And um, that was the beginning of me addressing my bitterness, me, me forgiving him to realize that I did have some unforgiveness. Um, and to stop that competitive thinking. That it was not competition. It was not me against the rest of the world and all the other writers that were substandard. That was wrong to begin with. And it was, um, all of that had been strangling me. And God showed that to me through an unlikely person, this particular agent. If I named him, many of you would probably know him right off the bat or some of the authors that he's represented, you'd be like, yeah, I know him, so I won't name him. <laughs> um, but God wanted more out of my writing. He wanted more out of my life and that part of my life. So there was potential that was untapped. And I'm grateful that um, I didn't go on much longer with that whole cycle. It was self-defeating. Um, God's intentions was for me to sow seeds into other people's lives through my writing. Not sell books. It wasn't all about book sales. Not to get, get into some of that seller list. It was about sowing seeds. In fact, that kind of harkened back to a promise that he had revealed when I was a young Christian. I was a, I was a seed sower. I'm a seed sower. And, and I got derailed with, you know, <laughs> illusions of grandeur. <laughs> um... Those things are okay. I'm not saying that being on best lovers list is not of God or selling lots of books is not of God. But for me, in this house, I had to pull back and reassess what success means. There's nothing, like I said, there's nothing inherently wrong with those things. Success comes by, for me, the measured in the telling of the stories and telling them well as I am sowing those seeds. In fact, um, I'm sorry, I'm checking my notes. Uh, God reminded me of that goal through a dream. My job, this was re re revealed in that dream, my job was twofold. To write what he gave me, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm a scribe for a, the Holy Spirit is moving my finger on the page or whatever, but I believe God gives stories, gives ideas. He's a creator and he gives that creative gift. So writing as he unfolds that gift, gift 
that he's entrusted and to share it with others. And that means writing so that that book is published, not marketing to, uh, to the, to the kingdom, to the, to the people that would want to write my books, read my books. And he'd take care of the rest. He'd take care of the success in the book sales and the lists and whatever. But that was, that's, just want to leave that with you as you seek him in defining success. Thanks.